Welcome back to Central Valley Talk, COVID edition. It seems like that's all we talk about these days. The president of the United States, who has the most secure bubble around him in the world, he caught COVID. Does that mean we could catch COVID? Cam Newton, the football player, quarterback, he's going to be out of the game. They canceled the whole game. Uh, uh, he's got it. All these people are getting it. Nobody I know, or not many people I know are getting it, but uh, it's affecting all of our lives. And uh, we're calling in different guests, different experts to say, how are you doing with COVID? Um, our next guest has a lot to juggle, and she took her time out to meet with us, Mayor Alma Beltran, Mayor of the City of Parlier. And you're not up for election right now. No, I'm not. So uh, she's not here trying to score points, or she's <laughs> here to give us facts and, and tell us what's going on in her community. Uh, uh, now, I found out something very interesting that uh, most of these small cities, the mayor rotates between the council every year, or so you switch mayor. But Parlier elects their mayor direct. Yes. And yes, is it yes. a four-year term? Yes, it is. Well, your first term or second? Sec my second term. Oh, so you've been elected and re-elected. Yes. So must be doing something good out in, uh, in Parlier. What I found when I was on the city council is the longer you stay, the more people enemies you make like some guy wants their tree fix one guy wants their sidewalk fix you can't make everybody happy uh, that is so true it is so hard to com to uh, please everyone and sometimes you know it depends on the situation sometimes we can't help because it's out of our control yeah. or and, and some will understand and some just don't understand but i find when you help one guy like the trees breaking a sidewalk he wants his tree cut down you go and you cut it down from the, then the uh, neighbor's mad because they wanted the shade that shaded their, you know, there's always something when you help one person you make another person yes. upset so congratulations on being elected and re-elected thank you now uh covid uh you have some cases out there parlier had some of the early cases didn't they We've had a lot of cases, and we had some casualties as well, oh, which boy. is which is really heartbreaking. You know, we we hear of the stories, and you know, you never could be too safe. You just don't know. We've tried to do everything possible, follow the guidelines, recommend the guidelines to the community, but you know, it's it, you just don't know who will get it. Um, in my family, you know, I had my son who had it. And he was the only one who had it. We are all in, were in quarantine at the time. How old is he? 20, he's 21 now. Mm -hmm. And he got it when he was 20, or just about a, a few months ago. He just turned 21. So, um, you know, we were all in quarantine, and he was the only one that got the COVID. And it was mild. It wasn't something like, you know, where he had to end up in the hospital, thank God. Yeah. But, you know, you just don't know um when you'll get it if you'll get it interesting just one person in your family got it and yes uh, now are your schools open no they're still doing the virtual learning mm -hmm. and um it's very hard for the students being that you know i have a 14 year old that has to do that it's very hard for her because she does sometimes require a little bit more you know one-on-one -on -one, uh you know i try to help her as much as i can but you know there's only so much i can help her with and so i think that it's really needed for them to start going back to soon i don't know back to school i don't know how soon that will be but yeah. i hope soon i really do and it seems like you know kids when you're young you run around the neighborhood with other kids are kids out playing like that or every you do so see some but for the most part i think parlor when you go to the parks you don't see a lot of the young kids yeah. you do see a little uh of the older yeah. uh teenagers maybe playing ball but, you know, maybe it's five, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, or ten-year-olds, you don't see as much because the parents don't want them out there of fear of them contracting the COVID. Speaking of playing ball, it seems like baseball is not a bad, I mean, kids got to do something right now. But yeah. baseball, they spread out first base, second base, third yeah. base. So I don't know if there's, I, I try not to say too much about COVID at all because whenever I say something like you should wear a mask, somebody yells at me, we don't want to wear a mask. I know. <laughs> it's hard. It's because everybody has their own beliefs of what they think that they should do. Yeah. And so I just say follow the guidelines to the best of your yeah. ability and leave it to them. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be uh, enforcing or trying to shut people down like the way you've seen it in Fresno uh, with some of the businesses. There was a lot of controversy with that. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the resources right. to shut anybody down. We don't want to harm any of our local businesses as well. Right. So right. we just leave it up, follow the guidelines. The businesses try to be safe and uh, it just try to be as, as safe as you can. Well, I tell you, in Fresno, there was going to be on the 1st, October 1st, a mass protest where hundreds and thousands of businesses just open and break the rules. 
but the governor took that away from them and said it's okay if you open. Uh, well, because so. I think he's seen that it was going to be, yeah. um, even if he said no, it, it, they were still going to do it because yeah. people have to survive. We do know that it's it's serious, you know, COVID, it, people have died from it. We understand that. But you're also harming those businesses that need to provide for their yeah. families. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't see yeah. how a lot of them are even surviving right now. No. And but, there's nothing for them. Right. But this week for the first time, and months and months and months, I went into a restaurant. I still ate outside, but now we can go in in Fresno a little bit. I went to the gym, uh, Planet Fitness. First day they opened, and then I went into. Uh, I watched a movie for the first time in so long. Oh, I'm so excited! I want to see. I want to watch a movie. I missed that. I used that was my yeah. thing for, you know, to get away with the kids and just watch a movie and movie night. But you know, now I'm glad that they are actually starting to, um, open that up. I went, I was the only person in the theater, so I felt it was pretty safe, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think people will start feeling a little bit more comfortable because I have traveled to Little Rock, Arkansas, and because I have a brother that lives out there, mm -hmm. I went to go visit him, and there's a big difference in that state from this state, you know. You did have, like, when we didn't have the barbers open or the beauty shops open, they had their beauty shops open they had to just follow their guidelines yeah. as well and i believe they didn't really have an outbreak out there as yeah. as much as well barber shops and beauty shops are the cleanest industry in the world anyway so it seems crazy to shut them down but uh let's talk about parlier now um i uh you guys depend on sales tax yes has it been down it's not what we expected we just passed a uh, a sales tax that increased, you know, so one it was a one cent sales tax. Mm -hmm. So we were expecting more this year. Um, so we don't know if, you know, we could have got received more mm -hmm. because of the situation. Of course, with, it did affect a lot of the businesses that were shut down yeah. that, you know, um, weren't in business. But then you still have the ones that were ordering online. So that kind of help, uh, helped a little. Yeah not enough but it did help us some but will your budget be affected will you have to lay off uh, police or fire we have been affected tremendously but even then we were able to still uh, propose a balanced budget for nice. our next nice. fiscal year so as long as we follow those guidelines we should be okay but we must you know abide to what our you know finance director mentioned now you have a sales tax extension coming up on the ballot? The Measure G, which is the existing Measure Q. Was not a new tax. Not a new tax. Just extends. It extends because we had a sunset on the Measure Q. And is that for public safety? Yes. Yeah, so Parlier a couple years ago put a measure on the ballot, asked their citizens if they want to pitch in a little extra, not even pennies, there's barely, mm -hmm. I forget, half a cent or something. On that one, it was a sales tax, but, yeah. you know, it was to save our police department right. at that time because right. we were in the verge of closing and the people the of Parlier voted yes. Yes. Yeah, but it was going to sunset. Now you have it on the ballot to extend it and just keep it going. So yes. It won't so be a new tax. The, yes. Harmless. Harmless. You guys vote for the Major G? Yes, Major G. Vote for Major G in, in Parlier. Those uh, from Parlier should vote for that, we hope. Yes. Um, so uh, your recommendation is for people to follow the guidelines. Then. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't want to harm anyone, you know, with businesses. It's really hard. It's easy for the ones who have a job that they get paid, whether they work from home or, or actually go into work. But the ones that have a business, they don't have any other resources to rely on. Right. So I don't want to harm a family because we always think about, well, they should shut down. Um, when you're thinking about that business, don't just think of a business, think about the entire family, because that's who you're harming. Shutdown's the easy answer. Ah, oh, just close everything. But mm -hmm. the, you know, the hard answer is, how do we stay open? How do we stay safe? Now, did your restaurants stay open? Uh, no, they were, they're doing the outside dining. Nice, you know, finding um, a way. Yes, they, they found a way. And, and we also had uh, a state program that you know, uh, we applied for, which is called the Great Plates. And that it was to help the uh, restaurants. So what we did is we um, informed all our seniors in the community to apply for the Great Plates. And what we do is we feed our, we would feed our, our local seniors, mm -hmm. and uh, use our surrounding, even our local, our local restaurants and surrounding city restaurants to help them with mm -hmm. uh, some kind of, you know, fund. 
gives so, those restaurants an extra little income stream. Right. And it helps the seniors too, right? Yes. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, that They're, was through the state. Uh, Parlier was the only, I don't, I believe Sanger tried it maybe with 20 seniors, mm -hmm. but we had 200 seniors. 200 seniors. Wow. That is awesome. So many great things happening in Parlier because... Mm -hmm. They have a great mayor out oh, there. Oh, thank you. Any other, any other thoughts on Parlier that you want to share with us? You know, um, just that we need to continue our, our the progress that we're making. You know, there is two seats that are coming on uh, that are open. We need to continue and move forward. We are working together. We're trying our best to move the city forward, make the changes that are needed for Parlier. Before, we had nothing. We mm -hmm. Now we have... Burger King, of course, has been there. That was the first business, mm -hmm. fast food business that they've had. We have Starbucks. We have Taco Bell that's coming. We are working on several other projects that we really can't mention yet because we're still working on the uh, project. But there's so many things that are coming down the, you know, uh, to Parlier. So nice. Parlier is a great location. It's in the middle of the surrounding cities, which is Sanger, Selma, Reedley, Fowler, mm -hmm. and Manning is a great location for new businesses. Yeah. I think there's an auto zone along there. Yes. I stop there a lot. Yes, we're looking at some other big um, ideas that will help Parlier tremendously, Very these uh, businesses that are, are, are considering. Now, there, there's two seats up. Will those be voted on in November? Yes. So coming up, there's going to be a big election in Parlier and, yes. and some other big elections around the country. So we hope people will uh, they go, go out vote. there and yeah. vote. Make yeah. sure that they vote. Is very This election is the most important election. Yeah. It's the craziest election, and yes. uh, the presidential election, and the debating, and the debate they had last <laughs> week. And now the president, who's up for election, is in quarantine there's just so many crazy things going on right now and my prayers go out to his family you know, and himself you know because nobody would should wish any any harm to anyone yeah. so yeah. that's uh something that like i said it's serious you know some get some die from it some don't some recover some you know just yeah. depends on on your body right. now uh I, I know we're over time but i just want to ask is uh sky clear out there or do you guys have the smoke oh no the the the, the smoke is still around <laughs> yeah. I can't wait till it starts to clear up. It, I hope soon. Yeah, I just want to do a little time capsule. If somebody unearths this tape for 20, 30 years now, we are going through. Parlier is going through you know, COVID. Uh, their skies are filled with smoke from the the fires in the mountains. The president of the United States is in the hospital with COVID. So many crazy things going. Right. Uh, Parlier is doing okay though. They're going to balance their budget and they're going to make it through this. So yes, we are. Congratulations. Thank you. And, thank, you. and uh, 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 thank you to Mayor Alma Beltran. Beltran, yes. <laughs> Mayor of the City of Parlier. By the way, go to their website, parlier.ca.us. And we will be back with more Central Valley Talk right after this.